Coming to you again, Sakina. And welcome back to Durban and arguably the best seat in the house. And we're standing on this flyover at the Mount Edgecombe Interchange and just taking it all in. And earlier on, we had the bridge officially opened, uh, this part of the interchange, and it is now all systems go. It's slightly noisier than it was earlier on, which is to be expected, given that there's more transport and activity below us. And I must tell you, it is flowing. There's transport, it's slow coming in. Uh, southbound on the N2 and also uh, eastbound on the M41 from Phoenix going towards Umtlanga, but it is flowing and I suppose that is what it's all about. But I'm joined now by the Deputy Minister of Transport, uh, Cindy Siwe Chikunga, and we're going to talk about uh, some of the skills and knowledge transfer that took place as a result of this particular project. Deputy Minister, thanks for speaking to us. Thank you very much and thank you for having us. So I understand we've spent more than 240 million rand on wages alone on this particular project. So uh, talk to us about how that was distributed and especially the transfer to small and medium enterprises. First, I think this is one of the best days, exciting days in South Africa. That makes you feel proud to be South African. I, I feel excited. You know, this was Sandral's flagship project. And, and, and it took about five years from 2013 to date. And we are here to launch it and to open this, this flagship, flagship project officially. So it's very exciting. And, and surely with such a, a flagship and a huge project, you expect that there will be first training of people and secondly, the empowerment of small and medium enterprises. And this is exactly what happened. So yes, you had up to about 803 people that got employment in this area during the construction. Uh, and, and surely with the maintenance, because one thing about the roads or whatever that we do, we construct, but we have to maintain. So surely even with the maintenance, we'll still have to look at the number of people that we're going to employ as we maintain this bridge. But also during the process of construction, we appointed uh, SMMEs, but women in particular, and I think we can do better in future, but women in particular and young people. And that is quite exciting because it gives them the experience of being part of such a huge, delicate, technical project such as this one. And that we are here to deliver it, it's something you can only be proud of. I was actually looking at the brochure here and looking at the numbers of uh, people employed. So um, adult males, 306, uh, youth, 450, and women, 20 adult women and uh, 27 uh, youth female. So it's not ideal, but what do you think are some of the obstacles in this regard? I think that is why I'm saying there's room for improvement. Um, like the issue of skills, because for a bridge such as this one, and in the manner in which it was built, it required high technical skills and so on and so forth. And that is why as the Department of Transport, we are investing in skills development and training, and we're doing it with high, uh, I mean, institutions of higher learning, because we want in future to have many women with such skills. But we did have engineers who are women who were part of this project, and the transfer of skills happened. But of course, I think we can always improve. Absolutely. And um, as you said, you know, the skills transfer, uh, doing that in collaboration with some of the institutions of higher learning. So what does that mean? Um, did people receive a certification for the work that was done, for the skills that they acquired during this project? Exactly. They, they do get an accredited certification from the work because you remember this is actual doing. You you get training, but you're doing it. And, and, and Sandral has... The, the relationship with some of the tertiary institutions that are accredited so that the certificates that are issued to those people are indeed accredited, I mean, based on the accreditation of that institution that work together with Sunral. So, yes, this, these certificates will make these people to look for employment elsewhere in future. But, of course, they can also open their own small businesses so that they assist people with the, quality, with the, with, with the, with the, with the skills that they acquired from here. But, you know, one other thing that I want to say about this is the fact that it is Sandral that puts South Africa in number 18 in the world in terms of the quality of their roads. Number 18 in the world. And there isn't any African states that is number 15 and 16. And therefore, we are number one in terms of the quality of our roads 
in Africa and number 18 in the world, thanks to these to projects such as this. And the issue is we still need to have money to maintain this road, this bridge, and any other road. And the fiscus cannot afford that. I'm just saying, I'm saying it in Which passing. is a very important issue. Yes, the because I, w I was looking at uh, the financials and uh, to March this year, I see Sandral has managed to reduce uh, some of their losses. But of course, they're still exorbitant. Uh, you know, if we're talking over 200 million still, it's, it's exorbitant. This bridge costed us 1.14 billion rand. This bridge. If it was just 1.14 billion rand, that's it. It's going to live for 100 years and so and it would have been off, okay. But it still requires some maintenance for it to live its life. If we don't maintain it, it's not going to live its life. And that is why you therefore need to have budget for the maintenance of this bridge, but for the maintenance of this beautiful network of roads. In fact, when I'm st standing here, some people at home might think, we're not in South Africa, we are in a developed, developing country called South Africa, our country. And, and this is the infrastructure that we require that is going to, to attract the investor to come because just this one bridge means a lot for the investor who wants to go to a particular area, simple and easier, without a uh, traffic jam and so on and so forth. So this bridge talks to quite a number of other things. It has a number of multiplier effects, even in the development of South Africa. So yes, we are the heartbeat of South Africa's economy. We keep South Africa moving. That is us, the <laughs> Department of Transport, we are excited. Deputy Minister, thank you so much. And your excitement, absolutely palpable there. And talking about the multiplier effects and also the skills transfer to small and medium enterprises as a result of the building of this bridge. But as she says, we need the money. These roads have to be maintained. Where is that going to come from? We still have Sandral here. The minister is still here, the Deputy Minister. Apologies sent by uh, the mayor of Eteguini and of course the premier who are both uh, ill-disposed but we of course will continue when we come back right now though let's take a break